new iPhones are out and you may have probably heard about all the features and how much they cost. But do you know how much it actually takes to make an iPhone? Just around $500. But it's sold for double the price. Ever since Steve Jobs introduced the iPhone in 28, Apple products have become increasingly expensive. They offer limited discounts and they are not the newest when it comes to feature sets. However, every third person in US owns an iPhone and they have a very loyal customer base. And as a company, Apple is so profitable that they got more cash lying around than the US government. But the most important question for us as a consumer is, are Apple products worth the money or are we getting ripped off? Let's get started. Before we answer those questions, we need to understand Apple's typical customer avatar. You see all other tech companies, they want to sell as many products as possible to as many people as possible, but not Apple. Their customer base is highly selective and their products are designed to please only that selected group. I will explain. You can go to an electronics store and get a Samsung phone for as low as $50. But if you walk into an Apple store with $50, you will probably come out with only a charger. You have to spend at least $400 to get the cheapest iPhone. And just like that, by creating a minimum barrier of entry and making the product inaccessible to a large part of the population, owning an iPhone means something more. It gives the feeling that this is a product to aspire to and hold on to. But is that feeling enough to justify all these spending? I am an Apple fanboy and I have always been. I bought my first MacBook in the year 2011 and since then I have spent thousands of euros on Apple products. And whenever someone tried to argue with me about my choices, I tried to convince them and also myself that I am making a logical calculated decision. But am I really convinced or has my fanaticism made me blind to the obvious? I wanted answers and this led me to a rabbit hole of memories. My first entry into the Apple ecosystem was with my MacBook. I was planning to go for higher studies and wanted to get a fast and efficient laptop. The iPhone was already out on the market, but I was a happy, proud BlackBerry owner. It wasn't as flashy as the iPhone, but it had one thing that the iPhone didn't, BlackBerry Messenger. Remember, this was before WhatsApp and BlackBerry was the only service that was offering something similar to a messaging app. I was planning to move to Germany and I thought of getting a Blackberry for my girlfriend so that we can stay in touch. But we broke up before I could get to the Blackberry store to make that purchase. And in that spur of the moment, I bought myself an iPhone. And 10 years later, the same me is sitting here talking to you about the importance of making conscious purchases. Coming back to the story. So I used that iPhone for five years before upgrading to an iPhone 10. I also used my MacBook for around 10 years before buying the M1 version last year. And somehow I always liked the feel of an analog watch and never felt the need to update it. But this changed when I started exercising regularly and I got myself an Apple watch. I also own an iPad, AirPods and an Apple TV. And that's my share of investments with Apple. And I can fairly say that, except for that first purchase with the iPhone, the rest were on a need basis and not because I wanted the newest and the best. But again, the question is, what is so special about Apple that separates it from the rest of the pack? So my first MacBook, which I got for around $1,000 in 2011, still works fine even after 12 years. Just that it's not good enough for my current work demands. But if I had bought a laptop from any other brand, I would have most likely made an upgrade. My old iPhone is also still technically working fine. I upgraded only because the battery performance was not optimal and I wanted a better quality camera for creating content. There is no question that the iPhones and the MacBooks are expensive, but their products are built to last and that saves me quite a lot of money. The MacBook with the Apple processor is a power hose, especially for those who work in fields that require such processing power. This is especially handy for me when I work with 4K files. Rendering and exporting a video is done in just a matter of minutes. Apple has always positioned itself as a brand for creators. The top end version of the Apple Mac Pro computer sells for $50,000. It's the epitome of performance. Although it's not meant for an average user like me, there is always a demand and market for these products. Then there is the beautiful Apple ecosystem with its features such as the universal clipboard. I can copy text on my iPhone and magically paste it on my MacBook. So when I want to write captions for Instagram, I write them down on my laptop and when I am done, I copy and paste them on Instagram before uploading them from the iPhone. I didn't know how much I missed this feature until I worked with my Office Windows laptop. Similarly, if I get a two-factor authentication on my phone, 
the message will automatically autofill on my Mac. And then there is the AirDrop feature, which allows efficient and fast transfer of files between Apple devices. When my friends and I travel together, then sharing photos is easy when the other person also has an iPhone. If there is an Android friend in the group, then we need to upload the files to Google Drive or send them across WhatsApp, which again compresses the photos and also there is a limit of number of photos that can be sent. Nothing against Android users, but it takes more time and more steps and it's annoying. AirDrop also helps me to instantly transfer files from my iPhone to the MacBook. Sometimes during my editing process, I realize that I missed a B-roll to be shot. So I can instantly open the camera on my iPhone, record it, send the file to the laptop and resume editing in minutes. Another cool Apple specific feature is handoff. If you work on one app on one Apple device, you can continue working on the same app on any other Apple device. So if I am browsing a page on Safari on my mobile while traveling, I can just continue browsing on the MacBook when I get home. And the same applies to Apple Notes, which is my idea capturing system. I make quick notes on the iPhone whenever I hear or read something interesting. And then it is immediately available on my MacBook and iPad. I can simply continue working on any device that I want. Devices in the Apple ecosystem work so beautifully together and that helps me to be more productive. All these small features saves me short bits of time and they add up in the long term. And for someone like me who believes that time saved is money saved, these features makes Apple product worth the money. But then that's not all. I work in the cybersecurity field. And I know how tech companies use and sell our data without giving any consideration for our privacy. Some people may not care about it, but I do. I agree. Apple products may not be the best in this matter, but at least they say that privacy is one of the core values. I would trust Apple with my data any day compared to those companies whose profit model is solely based on selling user data. And then comes the design factor. In 28, the cell phone market was dominated by cheap plastic bricks. Then came the iPhone with a beautiful design made of aluminum and glass. Apple dedicates so much time and effort to design the products and the attention to minor details is exceptional. Whether it's the rhythm syncing of the MacBook breathing light to the human breathing interval or how the torch icon changes when the flash is switched on. It may not mean much for others, but for a tech nerd like me, these are all the tiny joys of using the product. But forget the quality. Forget the performance, forget the design. The most important reason why I don't want to leave the Apple ecosystem is because their products are so silent and efficient that I rarely know they exist. My Apple laptop never bothers me with updates. It never shows me a blue screen. Apple products just get out of the way and let me do my job. Everything just works. So the conclusion is for me, Apple products are not about showing off. I don't think owning an Apple product makes me any cooler or more special. I also don't regularly update to the latest Apple products just because the processor is 40% faster or there is a new color available. Are Apple products more expensive than they are really worth? Probably yes. But then they are worth for those who value the user experience, the performance and the Apple ecosystem. And no other brand can offer an alternative as good as them. It's not about just one iPhone or a MacBook. It's the whole package that makes it all worth. If you enjoy this content, then give it a like and do subscribe to the channel. Until I see you with another video, adios.